Today is what I like to call Christmas for Deer Hunters. It's the opening day of firearm season here in Pennsylvania. You never know what's gonna happen. And that's why I like to come out here every single year in the Hunter Classic with the random spawns you just never know what you might run into. And we try to go for a hunt with as similar a loadout as possible to what I use in real life. So I hunt with a Weatherby Vanguard 7MA Mod 8. We've got the Scout 7MA Mod 8 in Classic. I do have the flinter bow only if a doe or something gets in the way. And then as for the rest of our loadout, we're just running with a simple pair of binoculars, a grunt call, a rangefinder, and some setaway spray. So should be fun. Hopefully we can get a decent buck out here. You'll also notice I'm not carrying any camping supplies. That could be a recipe for disaster, but hopefully that just kind of adds an extra layer of realism not being able to bounce around the map. And just a couple of minutes in, we have our first buck. Much like our Indiana muzzleloader hunt we did about a week ago, not super impressive to start 55 to 80, and this is where the one negative of the scout rifle comes in. If we want to use this prone, we have to use the bipod, and we're often shooting at some kind of weird angle. In this case, we got to a good flat spot and really no big deal to take that guy out, but we can certainly see some weird stuff with it, and while that doesn't necessarily fit the realism side of things, I do like that it's a little bit of a challenge that we deal with every single year. Speaking of every single year, in the past we've done a couple of different maps for this, usually Southern Whiteheart Island, mostly because we just did a hunt like this for the Indiana hunt that I just mentioned. I wanted to switch it up, we've done Red Feather before. Because we're likely to run into more Whitetail here, at least in my experience, I think that makes for a better hunt. So, kind of moving in the right direction, got a 100 to 125 buck coming in here. And another thing I really like about these hunts every year is instead of, you know, spotting the buck maybe even at 150 meters and waiting the entire time for it get to get into bow range, we can just take it out pretty much right as we spot it with our rifle. By the way, just had this track a moment ago, 80 to 100 kilo, not the buck that we just shot. So hopefully there's a better buck somewhere nearby. These tracks going out into the water like this, he could have done just about anything, guessing he doubled back and maybe he's actually back behind us. Could have spooked from the shot, maybe he's just beyond hearing range. And if actually he did what these tracks are kind of indicating, we might have a chance of not having to track a spooked deer. As for this guy, long shot at 60 meters, 109 score, definitely an improvement. And let's see if this next one takes us even further. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a moose in PA, but I don't think we're just going to let that walk away. I mean, it's a 195 to 215, all but guaranteed to top 200. We have the proper rounds, it's ethical. Why not just shoot the ground? How in the world did our bipod do that to us? Maybe we can go from here, that's going to be a little more like it. I think he's stuck. Got a whole lot of things going on, the worst part is... We kind of were gaining ground on that buck, but we don't have a moose call. The whole point is rifle season, and yet, I mean, that's not really supposed to be part of it. We never, hey, he is spooked anyway, it doesn't matter. We never go for anything other than whitetail in this particular traditional video. Gotta take that guy, though. Long shot, ran maybe... 20, 25 meters. Not a bad looking moose. Weight 518 kilo, double lung, 200.3. We will definitely take that. Might as well take a quick trophy photo. Not our best work. But to be honest, low light, not a monster moose by any stretch. But certainly not something I expect to happen very often. Especially considering we have a hunt like this once a year. In the meantime, Fleeing tracks on that buck, so he should be several hundred meters away anyway. Hopefully we can figure out where he fled to and maybe not be interrupted by a monster moose this time. Now that is the type of interruption I expected to have. Unfortunately, 50 to 70 scoring bucks, still obviously not the one that we're tracking, but he grunted, and we are here for white tail bucks, so we don't pass up with that sort of opportunity. We also don't pass up really awkward angled shots up the hill. I know we were leaning uphill when we set that up, but kind of figured that would help us in getting that aligned. Either way, I think it's our third buck down. 
and in total, the three just barely add to be bigger than our moose that doesn't really fit the entire theme here. 54 score for that guy, I think we're maybe the smallest? 58 was our first one, so it is. Now we can get back on this trail and maybe this time the next thing we kill is actually the animal we're tracking. So, third time's a charm. Finally got on this buck and unfortunately, only a charm in terms of finding him. Still pretty much average 95 to 120. At least in all the time it took him to come in. Found ourselves a nice flat spot here. Last thing we want is to shoot that tree and have him get away, so can I let him clear out of there a little bit? I think that's our... Okay, I guess we can go through the ground. I think that's our fourth buck. And of course we got the bull moose as well. Still waiting for that one good one to show up. And, you know, much like the Indiana video I referenced earlier, this is the type of hunt where I feel like we have to find something big. So we're going to be putting in the time, we're going to be putting on the miles, got to find something good. 116 for that guy. And we really haven't covered that much ground. We've been just kind of circling around in here. We were on our way down to that tower that we have marked. And I don't remember two or three bucks that we've stumbled into just trying to get the one that we finally just took down. And all that for a 116. I like the looks of that. Now, I didn't bring range finding binoculars. What I did bring was the regular range finder. Just take it with real life equipment, 260 meters. That is not a shot I think I'll be taking in real life. Not sure I have anywhere that I hunt in Pennsylvania where that is a possibility. But due to the bipod, we gotta sneak up a little closer anyway, and by sneak I mean sprint, so that he doesn't get out of sight here. Maybe on these rocks, we could pull this off. It's just a matter of can we get the bipod set up somewhat flat? I mean, that kind of works. That's him there. I think he, he might be a 7x7. Seven seven. That's gonna drop him. Really beautiful frame on that buck. I think if he was an 8x8, eight eight, easy 180 plus. Even at that 7x7, seven seven, I'm, I'm not sure how long those times were. That was a long way and not much time to identify it. We were just trying to get a shot off. He's got a shot at it. I think he looked pretty good. Not too bad on the time length. Definitely a 7x7. Seven seven. And everything looks fairly even. So tough to tell. We crashed in the brush here. Let's take a peek. Double lung at 207. 179.3. That is a quality buck. Gonna go ahead and take a trophy photo of that. And uh, as is required in every single one of these videos, if I see a buck like this today during the opener, I will be absolutely shocked. That is an awesome looking deer. And a pretty awesome looking photo, I would say, all things considered. The one thing I don't like is we can't really see the tine standing out there, but not much light here. Again, kind of a rush shot, just trying to make sure we could get him. Pretty darn cool. It always feels like kind of a tone setter with these hunts. Looking to, you know, try to take a good buck. Prior to the season, of course, the video coming out pretty much at last light on the first day. But I always like it when we can get something good. That may actually be our best, at least typical buck ever in one of these videos. At 179, not bad. And who could have guessed? Right back to an average size buck after that. Looks to be maybe a 120 again. And I'm not sure because he's a little bit above us anyway. We can lift this up high enough. He's going to stop right there for us. 120 to 145. So I guess going to end up being our second biggest, which is only nearly 60 inches shy of our biggest in this hunt. But sometimes that's the way it goes, even in real life. I may or may not have first-hand experience with that one. In this case, long liver stomach shot 124 score. Not too bad. That does, I believe, make him our second biggest of the hunt. And we're going to go ahead and scoot on through here. We finally started to cover some ground, but I definitely want to get through this part. And at some stage, I'd like to end up down in here. It's a really good spot, I find, like later on in hunts. The only thing is, in this case, we can't just fast travel to it. We gotta hunt our way all the way over there. Well, this is an interesting sight. Got a pretty solid buck here at 95 to 120. And then another one that I think is probably a little bit bigger, seemingly stuck back there. He might be working his way out. And I don't know that we can spot him, but we'll probably try to take that one. And I think if we go prone, he's gonna be out of sight. So we're gonna crouch forward, 
take that shot on the move, and you basically get like a stabilization boost for whatever reason when you're kind of moving forward. Do we hit that? It almost looked like he kind of recoiled. I'm gonna try to mark. And of course, we don't have the crosshairs. I don't see blood. Still want to make sure, because I thought maybe, maybe it was just the way he was climbing the hill, but I thought he moved kind of funny. No doubting the fact that we got the first one. And yeah, I'm pretty sure with these additional times, he is going to be a little bit higher scoring. Lung never stopping again, 122 meters away, 111. I actually thought he was bigger than that. Maybe he's not better than this one. And whether or not we connected on that shot, I think we're seeing why Red Feather was the choice today. We're seeing so many more bucks. We did hit him, by the way. I think that brings him down. This is the high power ammo, not the high velocity ammo. And I think in this case, that probably really helps. But compared to Whiteheart, this has been a two hour and 10 minute hunt. We've killed, I don't even know how many bucks. And we're just seeing way more. We're getting more calls because there's not bobcats and coyotes and stuff all over the place to, you know, potentially kind of take those calls away. You can only get so many calls as you hunt around. Bucks are out in big numbers today. And I think we just doubled up there. And there he lays, doubled up indeed. I had no intention of trying to get that second one when we initially took the shot. Just kind of realized as we were talking through the whole stabilization boost thing when you're crouching forward, he kind of was running right into our field of view again. I don't know, I still think that other one's gonna be bigger. It's gonna be close. Deduction there at the brow time will kind of help our case in terms of which one we took. 114, that guy is a little bigger. I'm not sure where, I guess it was just in the overall frame. Either way, two very average bucks, and still working our way down to our mark location down there. Got about a kilometer to go, and wouldn't you know it, we've got one final buck, again a very much average buck, right down here at the tent that we were heading to. We're probably just within a couple hundred meters of that X that we drew on the map. Just a solid looking eight point, I believe. Got to set up our bipod here. Oh boy, if we want to be prone. And I don't think we've actually called yet. He's just kind of wandering this way. Can we make a next shot? Well, it may bring him down, but definitely not the next shot I wanted. I mean, that works. I'm not sure what happened. We just kind of ended up too far to the right, I guess. Never did see a track till I realized he was laying right here. But we'll take that. One bonus buck. Just a pretty quality eight point. Not too bad. Neck shot, but didn't get the neck bone. 111 score. And I mean, to bring down a 179 whitetail, I think it was a 200.3 moose and a whole bunch of bucks. In a hunt like this, could not ask for anything more than that. Hopefully a tone setter for rifle season. I mentioned earlier, this video obviously comes out right about last light here in PA, so the results of opening day will pretty much be known. And hopefully there'll be something mirroring like what we had today, because if we could see something like that, that would be a pretty darn good day. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Best of luck to anyone out there hunting this weekend and beyond. And I'll see you next time.